Hello and welcome everyone. So I hope you're all doing well. And today what we'll, um, we'll go through is basically I've been um, experimenting with a football and I've been trying to work, uh, make this work on the um, network. So I'll show you the basic things um, of how you can actually achieve uh, a, a football. And basically what you can do is I'll just, I'll just go ahead and show you. So ignore this arrow. This is a different blueprint I've been working on. So what you can do is if you run up to the football, you can obviously move, move it around and it basically uh, spins it has uh, good physics enabled and then if you want to press the left mouse button it actually does a pass animation and with the right click you can actually go ahead and shoot so these are just the two things that i have done um and obviously when i shoot and when it hits the thing it actually scores the goal so it's just a basic setup that i'll, I'll go ahead and and show you guys so um, I won't make you go through the whole uh, Blender process of actually creating the football mesh and stuff. I've already done that for you, so I'll leave a link in the um, description for you guys. Now, this football actually, um, if I go ahead and show you, uh, this tr the twist count is really low because um, I had actually made a really high poly version. And then, as you can see, I made a normal map from that, so it actually looks pretty decent from uh, whichever way you look at the football from. So, four rated, um, f f sorry, four four eight twist is uh, pretty good for a football. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and download the files that I have um, provided for you in the description and then you want to go ahead and import the so the football mesh from the uh, file which you unzip obviously and then the two textures so one is the normal texture and one is the football texture now here you'll notice that these textures look very odd now this is because um, I have actually unwrapped or basically baked the textures um, the normal map and the texture onto a separate image file so it might look bad here but once you go ahead and make a material from these two which is down here and you apply that material in here it will look just fine because I have unwrapped it nicely so you want to go ahead and make a new material you could have the way to make a material you can right click on this and just create material and then drag in your normal map as well and then inside the football the material of the football so you don't have to do all this extra stuff. So the basic things you want to look out for is these two and the roughness value. So this is all the only three things you need. So you can, from your uh, basic text, you can just drag this, connect that to the base color, drag the normal map and connect that into the normal map. And you can press S and left click to create a, uh, a, sc a scalar parameter. And you can name this roughness and you can connect that to the roughness. Now the reason for this is um, the football should have a shiny look. That's just um, how it should be because this makes it seem a bit more natural of how a football should look. So then once you have done this, I'm going to save that. You can go to your material, right click create material instance. Now the reason for that is the roughness parameter that you created earlier, you can, you can control that down here. And you see, if I turn this up to one, you can see it looks very dull. The football just doesn't seem, it just seems like a football that um, really young kids play with. So you don't really want that. So I'm just going to turn this down to zero. You can also play around with the metallic value, actually. As you can see, uh, turning the turning it up just makes it really, really, really um, reflective. So yeah, I'm just going to leave this at like zero for now. And then go ahead and save that. And inside your football mesh, so to open that, you want to double click on the football static mesh and just apply the same material into both of these places. Now, the reason you want to apply it to both of these, because um, I don't know if I can show that here. So um, inside Blender, I was using two different materials. One was black and one was white. So we obviously copied the information from there. And it's obviously uh, also made it like that down here. So just make sure you apply the material to both of these as let me show you. So if I take the material off, you can see now these things don't have a material. So just go ahead and make sure you have the right material in both of these. Just going to search for it here. And just apply that. Now the next really important thing is your collision. So by default, the collision was horrible. So um, the, the collision was just really messy. So whatever collision you have, you can basically check that down here. You don't. So inside the, uh, if you scroll down on the side in the collision, I am using use simple collision as complex, but if you notice down here, I'm using customized collision. Now to get a customized collision, you can actually go ahead and select the collision once you've obviously made it visible from here. And you can press the delete key. It's backspace for me as I know um, I'm on um, Mac. So, and then you can go ahead to, you see this thing up here, collision? You can go ahead and choose the type of collision. Now, because we have a sphere shape, the best thing to do would be to go for a add sphere simplified collision. And you can see this nicely covers our football from all sides. 
Now, once you have done that, we can go ahead and close this. We don't need to do anything else in here for now. And we need to right click, create a new blueprint class and choose an actor class. Now, once you have done this, um, yes, yeah, so once you have done this, we can just, you can go ahead and open that. You can name this BP football for your own uh, things. And now you can either go ahead and drag in the static mesh down here, just drag and drop it down here, or you can go ahead and say search for static mesh, select that. And once you have a static mesh selected down here, you can find your football and it will show up. Now, first step first, once you've done that, you want to look at the details tab and you want to scroll down in physics you want to physic, uh, to simulate physics and this physics is going to basically you want to tick that and then in the mass and kg you want that to be 15 the default i believe is about 100 the linear damping to 1 and the angular damping to 1 and that's all you pretty much need and now inside collision i'm also using a physics material so before we do anything else just minimize this Go to the in the same folder where you have your football. Just right click and go on physics and choose physics material. You can select this and then select. And this will create a new physics material for you. You can name that. I have named this ball physics. Now we'll double click and open this. Now the values that I found good, you can play around with these values, is 0.4 in the friction, uh, 1 in the restitution, uh, 1 in the density. Then I'm using average and the um, override. And of course, you can see the um, different values I'm using down here as well. Now, back inside DBP Football, once you have created the physics material, you can find it down here. As you can see, I only have one which I created myself. Now, once we have gone over all of these things, now obviously all this is because I've been uh, trying to make this work uh, on the internet uh, network, but currently I'm having a few issues, so I'm just going to show you guys how to get your football to work currently only in the um, uh, in the um, single player scene. So what I'm going to do is on left mouse, you can search up here. So left mouse button, which I have down here, I'm going to drag out from pressed and you can search for add impulse. So I'm just going to bring in the new one. So do add impulse. And as you can see, now you have multiple options down here. You won't have this. So this is a custom function I created. But down here, you can see it's asking you where you want the impulse to be applied. Now, in our case, we want the impulse to be applied to the football. So you can select that. And you can see that automatically it brings in that with the football connected as, as the targets. And you can uh, connect the pressed down here. And at the end, you can say uh, print string. So you know what you have done. Now, because a left mouse button will say uh, pass. So this will tell us uh, on the top left of our screen that we have passed the ball. Okay, so now we need to define a uh, a location, a um, a direction in which the ball will be fired towards, and um, how fast we want it to go and stuff. So we need to set that up. Now that I have done down here. So first thing we need to do is we need to get our player controller. So we'll go ahead and right click, get player controller. Now this is the basically the player that is owning um, whoever owns this the, the um, controller at the moment. And then we'll go ahead and say get forward vector. So this is the basically forward direction that the character is facing. So the direction, um, basically the forward direction of the character. Now we need to go ahead and get a times, which is going to be, I believe, a vector times a float. So we can drag out from here and we can say float. As you can see, vector times float. And we can connect that into the impulse. Now the value we give down here in our float is the is going to be the speed at which the ball is is unfired basically, or you can shoot the ball or pass it. I'm going to promote this to a variable, and this I'm going to call pass speed. You can ignore the rest down here, as I was obviously uh, playing around with these, and um, I've been working around with those. So we can go ahead and say pass speed. I've already used that, so I need to change something else. So it'll say pass speed 1, but you guys can name it um, something you guys will remember easily. I'm going to make this intense, uh, instance editable. So now if we, just a quick check. So now if you click on the football down here, you can see we can set the pass speed down here, which is really useful um, because it allows you to um, set the speed or change the variables 
uh, from the uh, viewport instead of having to go in the blueprint again and again. And now the default for this uh, pass speed I'm going to set is about 3500 units. And uh, inside the add impulse, I'm also going to make sure I have velocity change checked. Now we'll compile this. So this is our first basic setup and I'm going to call this uh, left mouse to shoot or we can say pass. Now we can compile this, save this and obviously our default value is 3500 and we can go ahead and minimize and we can go ahead and play. You can just ignore this. This is just uh, something else that we're working with. Now if we walk up to the run up to the football, obviously we can move it around as you guys can see. If you press a left mouse button, you can see we add an impulse of 3500 and the football is shot in the same direction. Now if we go back to the blueprint. Now any case you want, let's say you want to have a pass, you want to have a shoot, you will be using the same exact same method. The, uh, the speed at which the ball goes forward, it depends on the pass speed down here. So you can just change the key and maybe copy and paste this down here and you can change the string and you will obviously have the same function down here. As you guys can see, I'm using the same function right here. I'm using this for the long kick and the value I'm using is 7000 and the right mouse button. So if you go back down here, we click play and we go ahead and if I just do right click, you can see I can shoot and when it hits the goal, it says team two scored and it tells me that I have just performed a long kick. So there we have it. So there's that. Now the next basic thing I'll go ahead and show you guys is um, uh, it's actually not really much right now. As you can see, when I do score a goal, it actually tells me that um, I have scored a goal and obviously. So I'll just go ahead and show you how I have done that. So I made this mesh inside the uh, inside the football, um, sorry, in, inside Blender and I'm using a texture. Now the reason um, I won't be giving this away uh, with the link is because the texture I'm using I, do, I believe it's not from the uh, public domain. I'll have to check, but um, so it's it's not very hard to make. But uh, if you guys, if someone requests it in the um, tutorial, I might actually add that to the link as well, so you guys can download the cage as well. So what I have is I just have these two materials for the cage, just a white material for the sides and just a net material for the center, which I have unwrapped as well nicely, so it looks good. And I also made a blueprint for this, and inside this blueprint, inside the viewport, as as you guys can see. I have a box down here and of course before we before we move on I forgot to mention something so inside the uh, the BP football you also want to have a box if you go here and you type box collision you can see you get that down there and you want to make sure this roughly covers your uh, the area around your football so as you guys can see it doesn't have to be as big as mine you just have to make sure that your player can hit it before the ball moves to your way because he walks into it or something and of course, I believe there is one more setting that we might need to check. So let's see. Yeah, so there you go. So make sure you in, in the collision settings, you can just type step here. Make sure you say no, the character cannot step up on the ball because that would just call bugs, um, just cause bugs in your game and stuff like that. So, okay, so once you have this box, now we we'll go ahead into the, uh, into the event graph and so this box is what I'm using, or basically any of it I'm, I'm using to allow the player to basically be able to use the left mouse button or use the right mouse button. For example, if I go ahead and disable this, so it won't have any um, input um, enabled on the actor. I go ahead and play. Uh, I press the left mouse button or the right mouse button and nothing's happening. This is because we haven't um, allowed our, we haven't told the system that you can allow, allow the player to actually uh, enable input. So we go back to the uh, to the football BP football, and you can just go ahead and just do um, on actor overlap. So on actor begin overlap, which I already have down here, and it doesn't have to be specific to the box or the football. It can just be specific to the whole thing itself. So whenever the player is overlapping it, you are you are enabling the input, and then on end overlap disable the input, and the target will be your player controller. And I think this is all that we need to do in here. Yep. So if you guys were having the issue, it's because uh, this is the thing you guys need. You just need to actually go ahead and enable the input. Now inside here, I have the football cage cylinder as, as, as the um, static mesh. And I have a box collision as the um, in the middle, which basically uh, determines when the football hits. So it can go ahead and score 
Now, one more thing I'll show you guys. If I press play, go ahead. And now, if you notice something, if I was to leave the football just outside the goal, now, if I walk in the goal myself, it's not going to say that the player has scored, although this would have, this was an issue before which I um, overcame. And But if I go ahead and shoot the football in that direction, you can see, let me just do that again. So obviously I have changed some setting again, so... But so basically what it does is it basically only um, determines when the football hits and it says that um, obviously you, you have scored when um, that happens. So inside the um, inside down here, what, what I have is basically uh, I have the box and on component begin overlap. What I'm doing down here is so make sure you go ahead and you have your box selected and you right click and say on component begin overlap. And I'm using a do once node because uh, if we don't have this, what it basically does is whenever your football hits um, overlaps the thing it, you say team one scored and when it comes back it says team one scored again so i'm using a, a delay down here just to make sure that it doesn't you know constantly keep saying the same thing over and over again so in this case i can go ahead and maybe turn this up to five the delay and so yeah so we'll use a do one snow down here and then after that what i'm doing is i am casting so you can go ahead and write here uh, cast to football so you can cast which basically search for the football uh, the BP football that we have so you can click that and the other actor is going to be our football where, where um, it will basically search whether th that the object has um, overlapped and as football I'm just getting so so I believe I did get football yeah so just get football and this is the target that it will look for uh, which will which will overlap and then I'm having a I'm using a print string and which is going to be so the default I'm, I have down here is called goal and in the print string you can go ahead and right click and promote this to a variable and this I have made editable and down here in the goal text you can basically if I compile and save this if I select this you can see down here the goal text I have set to team 2 scored and down in this one I have set this to team 1 scored so this basically allows for that to happen and So now we can go ahead and click play. As you can see, um, it tells us that the team one has scored. So this is the basic setup that I wanted to share with you guys that uh, this worked for me so far. Uh, it's not really working online as such. It's, it's working, but there's a lot of delay and stuff, which is causing a lot of issues. So once I have any update on that, I'll let you guys know how to get this to work on the uh, net network as well. But if you guys do want to uh, practice on your own, uh, replication is the key here, guys. So you need to replicate events. A simple thing that I have have so far, far been able to replicate is uh, basically... I'm changing the football color. So when I press one key, this is the only replication that's working on the server and the client. The football changes color to red, and obviously I have um, other multiple colors from one to six set up. So I can choose different colors, but that's just a fun thing that you guys can do, which is uh, which is fine for now. So uh, this is it, guys. I hope you guys found this um, somewhat useful and. Um, yeah, so that's all I want to show you guys today and basically it's actually pretty easy to to set up basically and you can obviously uh, de determine how fast everything shoots from one's uh, one direction and if you want just to uh, if you want to try out this on network you want to make sure things like um, in your replication for the main thing you have um, replicate zone replicate movement let load and client always relevant all these things so you can play around with these things you can check out the uh, online tutorials on um, replication and stuff so this is it guys, I hope you guys found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next video.